Hey guys, happy early September 2022. My name's Evan. Here I've got Ava. She is a Max Pink boa constrictor, Argentine boa constrictor, direct from Ancient Reproductions, uh, Bob Guerriere. Um, she is a 2018, and she is actually in deep shed right now. Can you imagine how good she'll look after this? I'm pretty excited about seeing this. Uh, anyways, I wanted to talk today about um, humidity and locality boa constrictors, and I wanted to address a misconception about what dripping cages mean. Uh, and so just in general, I've always found it peculiar when, that people don't conceive of humidity needs as a gradient, just like temperature needs. Um, and by this, I mean, you'll hear people say, even pretty experienced people will be like, I maintain my boa constrictor at 70% humidity. And they uh, act like that is some static value that they're holding um, and walking the line on in their cages. And A, I don't think that's actually what's going on in the cages. I think there's quite a bit of variability day to day and spot to spot within a cage, especially if they're providing enough space. And also, I think that that's not what a snake needs. I think this snake in shed needs more humidity than she does when she is not in shed. Um, I believe that cycles of drier and uh, wetter are healthy for their skin, healthy for the hygiene of the cage. A dry cycle helps kind of tamp down any bacterial load after a clean. And also, I think it's kind of important for breeding. It's one of the things, environmental factors, that you can control and apply a, a cycling pressure on your animals with um, relatively safely. So um, in general, what I would say and how I keep all my boa constrictors and all my snakes really is I maintain them at the lower end of recommended humidity, meaning that um, say if you say the recommended humidity range for a true red tail bow is 60 to 100 percent humidity, I'm going to aim for 60 percent humidity as their ambient cage. And then I'm going to provide some sort of buffer like a tray of wet moss or a micro hide or in my racks, I'll even just pile a big handful of sphagnum moss in the corner and water it weekly and that will be the wet spot. So um, that's just generally how I, I keep them. It allows some self-selection um, of humidity needs for the snake. It prevents you from having just a completely wet, dank cage and it promotes uh, hygiene. So I, that's just how I do it. Um, one big point I would make for you is I don't think any boa constrictor really wants to sit on wet substrate. Um, you can have your substrate releasing humidity and the surface be dry. That's just a really important point I'd make. For example, in these litter boxes, I will water a corner and let that water run underneath all of that coconut. And then that will release the humidity, but where the boa will sit is not dripping wet. That promotes good skin health. Uh, and avoid certain skin dermatitis issues. So um, that's one thing I'd want to say. Let's see, let's put her back in here, right here. I just fed her an extra small rabbit recently, about the size of a uh, large rat or a jumbo rat. And it's interesting because I fed her mate the same thing and he's still settling that meal and she's just plowed through it. So it shows you how variable individual to individual she is. Um, and these animals of feeding needs. Um, but the last point I wanted to make is a misconception about dripping wet cages. Okay, and so this is actually why I wanted to make this video this morning. I don't know if you can see, but there's condensation in this cage right now. There's condensation in this cage right now. And I made the point that condensation is not particularly good in that dripping wet cages promote unhygienic conditions, dank, stale air, bacterial loads that will cause you a whole host of issues. But I'm just showing you Connie right now. This is Connie. Connie is gravid. She's a gravid guy and a bow constrictor. And um, I had to come in here and you can see that she's getting real restless. She's probably at like 110, 112 days post ovulation shed. Um, and again, here, another example of me managing humidity through microenvironments. And you can see her cage is, her cage is wet right now, it's dripping wet. And that's generally not a good thing to have. But I also want to make the point that dripping wet cage does not immediately mean super high humidity. What it means is that the humidity of the cage is higher than the dew point in the room. And the dew point is an interlock between your temperature and your humidity. So as your humidity goes up, your dew point goes down. So if the dew point is 75 degrees, that means that 
any surface that is, it means that the humidity is high enough that any surface that is below 75 degrees will start to collect condensation. And that's what's exactly happening in these cages right now. This is the first cool morning I've had this season. It's um, down at about 71, 72 degrees. And that means that uh, that glass is actually cool and that inside of that cage is warm. So the warmth inside is allowing that air to hold a lot of humidity. You don't see the back sides of these walls dripping because they are um, they're more insulated than glass. But the room temperature is chilling this glass and it's allowing for some condensation. And you can see how quickly this goes away even since I've opened this cage because it's letting that just to dry out. This cage is walking the point of condensating. And that means that I've got very high humidity, still like high summer humidity. And what you will see is as this whole room gets ambiently cooler, I'm gonna to have to reduce that temperature or reduce that humidity to maintain non-dripping uh, conditions. So what you should know is that this is telling me that I still have very high humidity from summer-like humidity in, this in these cages. And I'm just starting to see some cool temperatures in my room. And I'm gonna to have to start walking these humidities back down or I'm gonna to start to have um, condensation issues and hygiene issues over time. But we're, right now we're just kind of walking the tight wire of it's drying up immediately. Uh, when I walked in this room today, it was like 69 degrees and all these cages were fogged up and now it's 71, 72 and they're all drying out. So that's just the reality of it. But people often think, oh, my cage is dripping wet. Congratulations, I've got achieved 100% humidity. No, you've achieved drippiness, which is again, not great. But if you're keeping in a room that's 62 degrees, it could only be 65% humidity in that cage and it could be dripping wet. So to some degree, the condensation can be used as a cue, but not in the way that people think. It's more complex than that. It's an interlock of your temperatures and it's just how you interpret it and maneuver off of that. So that was the big point of the day because it's just a phenomenon that I see only a handful of times a year happening in my cages, condensation. Um, and I wanted to make a point about it. Take care. Bye-bye.